we will all offer the prayer of meditation. Father of blessings, may this dawn's promise become mine. May we receive solutions for our problems. As a child of God, may we receive all of the inheritance. In all things you've told us to become witnesses. All this time, what was lowly, what was evil and filthy, now may we have a new start. Even what the thoughts that we had a moment ago, may we throw them away. And may we have the workings where Rahab the prostitute became Jesus' grandmother. May this happen for all of us. We believe your promises will be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen. Let's greet the person next to us. I'm meeting you for the first time. I'm meeting you for the first time. It's all a new start. So if you're seeing some of the first for the first time, it's a new start. Let's say to the person next to us, let's have a new start. Let's have a new start. Let's all have a new start. So don't have that heart that you had a moment ago. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 18 to 19. If you hold on to the past, God can't bless you. So we have to throw it away. How can we throw away that what's good? He's going to give you better things. And no matter how good it is, all you're left with is just the stick from your ice block. You know, you've eaten the chocolate. All you've got left is what's the melted bits on your hands. So just wash your hands and have a new start. Every day it's a new start. Proverbs chapter 5. Let's read from verse 9. A man... God's word says, always you will regret. When you're regretting, already that means the time has passed. In the world it means it's over. When does a man regret? When you have disease in your body. When your money is taken away, you're like, oh, I'm going to try it again, I'm going to try again. Don't become someone who's simple. If you have a problem, straight away you have to have a new start. If you have disease in your body, that's when you regret. But in the world, if you're regretting, already it's over. But with the Lord, he says, still there's a new start. So Proverbs chapter 5, verse 9. Let's read it. Or you will give your vigor to others and your years to the cruel one. Amen. And here it says... You know, if you have fear, then you don't have faith. Faith has departed. But this is what people worry about. It's where it says, I'm afraid that you'll give your vigor to others and your years to the cruel one. So your reputation, all of your life, you're worried that it will be taken by others. That's why if you sit in a high, on a high position, People try so hard to not have that taken away. So what else is it that we're afraid of? Verse 10, and strangers. So all the wealth that you have stored up, your hard-earned goods will go to the house of an alien. And strangers will be filled with your strength. So if you're not able to earn money, if you don't have, you know, um, power or, or fame. People try so hard to get that. And once you get that, this is what people worry about. And so they end up sending money overseas and they can't find peace in their hearts. Here it's pointing out that people, they're filled with worries. If you're filled with fear, that's someone who is evil. 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 10. And what else is it that you're afraid of? And you groan at your final end when your flesh and your body are consumed. That's when you groan. When people are sighing and regretting, when is it? It's when you have disease in your body. Before that, oh, I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. 
No matter how respectworthy someone is, they'll say, I'll try again, I'll get up again. But it's when you have disease in your body, that's when you start to regret your life. In our world, in uh, in our country, in the world, you see people who have gathered some money. You buy the books that they've written. You know, people think that that book is, you know, worth something, worth something. But in the end, you end up worrying, you end up groaning and sighing. You've probably seen in your household. Even though my, our family was poor, you know, our uncle's house or, or someone else's house, they live well. But when they died, someone else ended up using that money and that family ended up a mess. So even those who have stored up, they're worried that that's going to happen. And if you don't store up, you're worried because you haven't stored up. But until God strikes your help, at the beginning, when he strikes us, he takes away our money. If we don't listen, then even after that, then he hits our health. So, when we've been hit by money, by money problems, to quickly turn around, that's someone who is wise. When our health is hit, hit to quickly turn around, that's when you're wise. But it's, it's when you're sick, that's when you look back and you regret and you say how I have hated instruction and my heart spurned reproof. It's after you have disease in your body, that's when people start to say correct words. But already, it's that means it, the chance has gone past, so nothing works out. So people go the way where they spend their life with disease and then they go to hell. But God says, still there is hope. Verse 13, I have not listened to the voice of my teachers, nor inclined my ear to my instructors. When? It's when you have disease, that's when you realize this. Many people, it's when they have disease, when they're about to die, that's when like they're like, oh, I should have heard that instruction. I should have heard that rebuke. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1. Let's find that. If you don't listen to that, then you're a beast. It's because you're a beast that you don't listen. Many people end up regretting and sighing. It's when they have disease, when everything's over. That's when they feel discouraged and they end everything with corruption. But that all goes to your children. You ruin yourself and your children. So how is it those people live? You always live like the way your parents did. That's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18. So the apple doesn't fall from the tree. It's heredity. But if we go inside of Christ, no matter what our ancestors did, whether they earned and stored up or whether they didn't, so those people who did store up when they have disease, they give up on their lives and they end up groaning, saying, this is all my life's ended up being. And that's when they like, oh, I should have believed in Jesus. But these days, people don't regret not believing Jesus. Why? Because if you go to a fake church, you might as well not go. You end up eight times worse. But where people have heard God's word properly, correctly, they end up regretting and groaning. But just because you repent, that's not all. You have to act completely. So if you realize your sin, just because you are sighing and you're regretting, no, you have to act completely. So Proverbs chapter 12, verse 1, someone who hates to hear reproof, rebuke. Let's read. Whoever loves discipline loves knowledge, but he who hates reproof is stupid. Amen. If you hate to hear reproof, rebuke, it's when you're lying down sick. That's when you're like, I should have listened to my parents. I should have listened to that saint. I should have listened to that pastor's sermons, sermon tape. Those people who didn't listen at that time, they're beasts. The people who don't listen now, they're beasts. That's what God has said. So how can a beast succeed? 
So if you don't listen to rebuke, what don't you have? You don't have knowledge. If you don't have knowledge, that means you don't have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. In other words, you can't be a man. It's that person that ruins their house. Let's find Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. Many people, they ruin their lives. They have disease. It's when you have disease, that's when you listen the most. They're like, oh, if I listen, will I get healed? If I listen to that, will I get healed? But those who are demons, they still don't listen. And all they do is groan by themselves. So if you go to hospitals or someone who's sick at home, you know, with a stroke, or you listen to them, what their true confession is, is nothing but groans. If they have a house, who is it? that's going to end up using this house. If they have disease early, it's like, oh, who's my spouse going to remarry? So they end up worrying about these these worthless things. Oh, what's going to happen to my children? These worthless worries. So before you do these useless things, oh, if you'd only listen to God's voice earlier, when it says you're ruining your house, It's starting with your own body, starting with your heart. So let's read Proverbs chapter 14, verse 1. The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish tears it down with her own hands. Amen. Let's read it again. The wise woman builds her house, but the foolish tears it down with her own hands. Amen. So who is it that's the the foolish woman? Both men and women were brides to to Jesus. So who is it that's foolish? Someone who doesn't repent, someone who is stubborn. Let's find Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13. So it's this person that hates to hear reproof and ruins their own house. If you go to that person, someone who ruins their own house, You look at people whose businesses are ruined. If you ask them, they always teach you something of ruin because that's all they know. That's all that they know. What they think is doing well is ruin. But you look at someone who's ruined, their personality is like that. You look in your family, in your household. Why is it that I'm ruined? Because they have something in their personality that that brings about ruin. On this earth, you can't fix it. You may pretend you're not like that. You may hide it, but God knows. But with forced repentance, it disappears. This is an amazing promise. Those who haven't done forced repentance, they don't know, but those who have, they know. So if you do forced repentance fervently, those people who have had miracles, that you ask them, they say, oh, I couldn't do this with my personality, but, but without me realizing it happened. So if you do force it repentance, he does it. If you're inside of there, by the mystery of Christ, by force it repentance, if you go inside of him, he guides your heart. So if you do force it repentance, a thousand generations receive that blessing. So your children aren't like that, and yet they end up doing good works and, and going that good way. So it's firstly the pastor who has to first do this. But what's the biggest problem for us? fornication because it comes from our hearts and our flesh everything we see you know look at all the signs it's all fornication so the sin that we commit the most that's what appears most in the world that's what's most on the signs and the posters and the magazines and the newspapers you know what's on tv and in movies so what we the sin that we commit the most that's what we end up seeing the most and doing the most So we're all ruined because of the sin of fornication. Sodom and Gomorrah was ruined because of fornication. Even now the world's like this. So what is it that we want to do? Whatever world, they say we've made the, we've built the longest bridge and God, then he just sends the wind and it's all, it's all collapsed. You know, there's no country that hasn't done this. And yet they say that this is, you know, scientific development. So who is it that is foolish? Someone who's sinned, someone whose ancestors have sinned. Let's read Proverbs chapter 19, verse 13. A foolish son is destruction to his father, and the contentions of a wife are a constant dripping. So if you have a bad spouse relationship, or you don't have sibling affections, 
or the parents and children have a bad relationship. This all comes from foolishness. It's because of the parent's sin that you become foolish. What is foolishness? It is to be stubborn. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 2. Foolishness is to be proud. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 3. So it's to be stubborn and proud. Whatever household, the children are stubborn and proud. But to, for, these, for these kids to be raised up like this, it's because of the parents' sin. So how is it that I'm going to live? Is it when you have disease in your body, that's when you groan? And you're like, oh, I, why is it I didn't listen to God's reproof? Oh, why didn't I listen to his word earlier and repent? God doesn't end with this. Someone who's ended up like this, because you were foolish, someone who only has disasters for, for themselves, even if you ruined your household, let's find Proverbs chapter 14, verse 27, still you can live. Still there is a way to live. By what? By four-step repentance. Because this is so good, that's why the demons hinder so much. But still we can do well. Our children can do well. Tomorrow will be better. That's why we're here at dawn, to all receive this. Let's all receive help and live well. Let's live with happiness. What good news this is. If I just read Proverbs chapter 5, it's nothing but discouragement all my wealth taken away, or even if I've stored up all this wealth. All these wealthy people in the world, people who have money, people who have a building, when you see when they have disease and they're about to die, they're all worrying about what the Bible says. Oh, I didn't get to eat. I, you know, I gave up. You know, I suffered so much in the heat to earn this money. Who's going to end up using this money? That's what they're all worrying about. But when does this happen? It's when you're lying down sick. Before that, they're running around thinking they're going to spend that. But it's when they have disease. And that's why their personality becomes worse. When they're lying down, you know, they get angry and they have such a temper. If they could only go out and sell what they have and be able to use it, but they can't do that. And the children are coming, wondering when they're going to die. So they're, they're in such torment. It's like lying on a bed of thorns. So their personality becomes so bad. You can't even look at it because it's so filthy. I'm sure you've seen someone in your family like that. They've got some land and they're, they're like, who's going to end up spending this when I leave it behind? My wife's only 35. Who's she going to end up marrying? Oh, my husband's only 40. Who's he going to remarry? And what's going to happen to my children? And they're filled with all these these useless thoughts. They're filled with their fears. And they end up having such a bad temper. Well, because you're not sick, you wouldn't know. But if you were lying down sick too, you'd end up like that. That's what God teaches us. But even in this in this despair, there is a way to live. It's not the end. There is still a way to live. At this dawn, may we receive it and pass it to our children. We all have to receive this blessing. There is a way to live. You know, how much is that wealth anyway? What's better is to go to heaven. If we leave that behind, whether someone buys bread with it or meat meat with it, that's not for us to worry about. It's for us to go to to a better place, which is heaven, for us and our children. As long as I believe, God will be responsible for our family. We all have to receive this promise. We all have to receive this promise. At this dawn, let's receive that help. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 27, let's read it. The fear of Jehovah is a fountain of life, that one may avoid the snares of death. Amen. Even though you're in complete despair, that person who's filled with fear, that person without faith, someone groaning and sighing. If you look in your household, your relatives, someone who's lying down sick and they're sighing. If you say according to the Bible, you're worrying about about this, aren't you? And they're like, oh, how did you know? 
You're worrying so much about what's going to happen to your children, aren't you? You know, even though they're so evil, even the hedgehog loves their own children. And so they worry about the children, but it's all useless. If when you end up going to a better place, which is heaven, even though you're caught in the snares of death, even in that despair, as long as you do force your repentance, as long as you fear God, you will go to heaven. It's when you go to that better place, then you and your children will do more well. So let's be happy. Even though we have this despair and we can't have joy, from this dawn, it's a new start. Even if you're sick, there is a new way. There is a hole to escape from. Even if we don't have wealth, there is a way to live. Because God makes it so that we and our children do more well. There is never disadvantage, even in our difficulty. It's not that I have to earn money. It's when you say, I'm going to live according to, to please God. That's when we fix our wrong things by forced at repentance and it's when we're right that's when God gives us blessings that's when we can rule over and control over so we will do well we will do more well there is a way for even the dead to be alive it's only by forced at repentance at, at this dawn may we all live by forced at repentance there is no despair for us let's greet each other we will do more well we will do more well We will do more well. We will do more well. What a good promise this is. Unlimited blessings, unlimited satisfaction and happiness and to go to heaven. If I go there, then my children will do more well. Why worry about what you leave on earth? You look at worldly people. They read these books that wealthy people have written. That's trash. In heaven, that's not even a pin drop of what's in heaven. It's trash. So these people who are, who are famous in the world, their books, it's, they're trash. People who buy those and read them are worse. So according to this word, we will do more well. Whatever my situation, if I go to heaven, my children will do more well. Acts chapter 16, verse 31. It's me. As long as I go to heaven, that God will be responsible for our household. We have a new way. Even though we're caught in the snares of death, even if we have disease, our business has failed. As long as we fear God, there will be a new way, a new road open to us. At this dawn, may we all receive this help. If your business is in difficulty, by Christ, let's find a new way. As long as we fear, there will be a new way. Let's surely obey the word and receive the best happiness. Let's all pray. Almighty Father of blessings, you have said your word will be fulfilled. There is no lie. May we not be simple where we regret when we're sick in our flesh. Even if we're in that situation, by fearing God, may we find a new way. May we get rid of those fears. And by thanksgiving, with happiness, may we be able to receive blessings, to have a blessed life, to pass it to our children. And may we be someone who can share this with others. From this dawn, we believe we and our children will do more well. In Jesus' name, we thank you and bless. Amen.